Normally, most of the low-density lipoproteins, or LDL, pass through the endothelial cells by transcytosis from the blood and then enter the body cells by receptor-mediated endocytosis to be used in normal cells processes. The progression of atherosclerosis begins when the endothelial cells of the arterial wall become damaged. This can be caused by hypertension, smoking, hyperglycemia and hypercholesterolemia, which is an increased number of LDLs in the blood. Endothelial cell damage increases the permeability of the arterial wall, allowing LDLs to enter the tunica intima. White blood cells such as monocytes normally move freely through the blood vessels and do not attach to endothelial cells as they swim past. However, when endothelial cells are exposed to irritating stimuli or damage, they will express adhesion molecules that can capture nearby white blood cells. These white blood cells undergo morphological changes that allow them to flatten and squeeze between endothelial cells. This movement of white blood cells out of the bloodstream is called diapedesis. White blood cells are capable of producing free radicals, and when these free radicals come in contact with LDLs, oxidation occurs. Oxidized LDL particles are especially effective at attracting and activating white blood cells. White blood cells then engulf the modified LDL particles, which stimulates them to produce even more oxygen-free radicals. It becomes easy to imagine that an area of endothelial damage will lead to an accumulation of modified LDL particles and migrating white blood cells. A positive feedback situation begins to arise when accumulating immune cells and modified LDLs bring in even more immune cells and modified LDLs. Macrophages in the tunica intima start to engulf modified LDL particles. Ultimately, this leads to the production of a cell called a foam cell. A foam cell is saturated with LDL particles and the excessive amount of lipid in the cell gives the cytoplasm a foamy appearance. Foam cells ultimately die and release their contents, which are then quickly engulfed by other nearby white blood cells. Please note that the animation shows smooth muscle cells also engulfing LDL cholesterol. Eventually, the accumulating lipid from the processes just described and the fragments of dead cells produce an area with a lipid core that begins to form a plaque. Endothelial cells cover the plaque. The plaque accumulates calcium salts and more dead cells over time, and it will harden. This plaque in the arterial wall is atherosclerosis. If the endothelial cells over the plaque are compromised, blood clots can form on the vessel wall. Remember that healthy endothelial cells normally express inhibitors of clotting, but now, since they are damaged, they no longer do this. Over time, ruptured areas of plaque may create a situation where an area of plaque may jut out into the vessel lumen. The clot that forms and attaches to the wall is called a thrombus. If the clot breaks loose from the arterial wall and floats downstream to even smaller vessels, it is called an embolus. Here is an animated summary now of the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis.